stance because they don't have the capacity, you know, they don't have the investment to do the kind of research that is required. And that is why we continue to be a dumping ground, even for the things that are traditional to us. You see, and that is why we heard recently that a company was bringing uh, uh, goosey soup and nasaru uh, for it or something. Things that are local to us. This is an invasion. And the only way you get out of that is to make sure that you equip your scientists. You equip, you, we don't even have agriculture extension workers. Government said they were going to employ uh, about 150,000. If they do that, I tell you, they will revolutionize agriculture in this country. But it's still a promise. It hasn't happened. So if you want to know if the money is enough, the money is a Bismarck. It's not even a starter. It's yeah. been said that um, the, the problem is not that Nigeria cannot, you know, make enough um, farm produce for the people. He's mentioned the, the challenge of storage. Mm. How mm. do you want government to address that? The first thing I would like to state is that indeed Nigeria's population is growing. We are estimated to be 250 million, maybe a decade down the line. I tell you, even at that population size, we don't necessarily need to cultivate one hectare more than what we are already cultivating. We are culti cultivating about 40 million hectares out of about 80 million that we have. But when you look at our per hectare yield, it's among the lowest in the it's world. That tells you that in terms of knowledge impute, in terms of technology, in terms of supporting the farmers, we are not there. Then you now have to deal with the issue of post-harvest loss. We are not even talking about the one that the farmers lose due to climate change, due to other inadequacies like inadequate um, irrigation infrastructure and what have you, which is a whole lot. Many farmers commit suicide or go out of the profession entirely. Then you now have post-harvest loss. You go to major markets like mile 12, and you see that a third or half of what is bought there in terms of perishable goods end up being destroyed. So if we can only improve our efficiency, and that we do with research, with knowledge, with direct extension support to the farmers, if we can improve our efficiency in terms of storage, in terms of processing, you want to be a cottage farm uh, processor in this country, which is happening in... All the other parts of the world where you see people actually exporting, they started all of this thing from cottage industry. You want to start a cottage industry around the food uh, products in Nigeria. Now that could make life hell for you. Mm. So we have institutions that are supposed to facilitate entrepreneurship. They're actually the ones killing it. So these are issues that government needs to, to wake up to. It's not just to, we know they have good intention. It's not just to have good wishes. I mean, programs like the intervention on rice, the alcohol brass, well, these are good initiatives, but it's not going to take us anywhere Is unless we deal with the issues that hinder you know, uh, production that hinders the spirit of entrepreneurship. And that the question is, how do we deal with it? You've said we need storage, we need research. So who are you directing this to? Because he's talked about silos. Mm. We have, you know, I, I remember um, Gloria doing a report on the silos in Abuja. Mm. We have silos. How mm. do we ensure that these produce get to where we can keep them safely for us to do? Okay, so government have said that um, building infrastructure is a major uh, focus for them this year. And that really would help, you know, and that's a step in the right direction. But beyond, you know, building infrastructure, the first thing you need to ensure is that the farmer who is already in the trade does not suffer. Because the food we eat in Nigeria is still largely produced by small-scale farmers. And they are not getting value for their sweat. So, and then their children look at them and say, I will never be like my parents. So, young people are not encouraged. The average farming age in Nigeria is about 60. So, meaning that the people who should be resting are the people feeding the rest of us. So, government needs to come in Frontally, you want to deal with the issue of lack of adequate research in all our institutions. That is government leading the way and then enabling private sectors to come and participate. You, this government promised, for instance, that young people should go to the farm. You produce, we will take it off you. If government does that, you are then creating the room for private sector to also want to put in their money. Because if government is reluctant to put in its money, the private sector will probably not be encouraged to put in their money. 
So there are quite a lot of things that government needs to deal with to create the enabling environment that will encourage private sector, you know, to come and put in their money into the uh, agriculture sector. Okay, okay so Mr. Lajo, mm. um, he's talked about the things government needs to do. But I want to ask you a question in terms of, like, food production. Are we getting any better in terms of food production? He's talked about per hectare yield being low. Yet a lot of people are going into farming. I mean, there are people who are quitting their jobs, banks and all of that, to go into farming. So would you say we are getting better? And can Nigeria feed it? Yes. Let me, let me first take your last question. Your last question, sorry. We can feed ourselves if we get the right policies in place. I was, you know, I try, I try to put practical, uh, talk about practical issues. Lots of people are going into farming. That's true. But there are a lot of hindrances on the way for those people who are going into farming. For instance, agricultural inputs that you use, the prices are fluctuating all the time. So it's discouraging. The cost of buying herbicides in August was not what we bought it in September. So if you really look at it, going into agriculture, I mean, people say it's only someone that wants to waste his money that going into agriculture. I don't think that has likely changed. That is from my own experience, because if you look at it, cost of buying fertilizer, you cannot, if, unless you subsidize all these things for farm, these farm, small holding farmers, that is where you can have the kind of, uh, what is it called, the kind of latitude you want to have from farming. So basically, in terms of production, we are not producing enough, even the ones you say they are perishing, because the population is fast expanding. And it's just an, it's just uh, it's just thinking that people are in the, people are that people are on the farm. That means they are producing a lot of people are you know, people are not on the farm, so to speak. Lots of people are going to look for other jobs because it's not really encouraging to produce. So basically, we are not producing enough. The ones that they are produced, they are being lost to post harvest and whatever. And people are not economically, people are not making enough money from their whatever. If you say we are not producing enough, I was reading up um, online and I saw that the person that has the largest, second largest farm rice in Nigeria is the 36-year-old or thereabouts. Yeah, those are about 40,000 hectares. That, about. that means, you know, something is changing. Yeah. Looking at what is on ground mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, government is talking more about, about diversification, mm. let's look away from mm -hmm. oil, how... So what would you say about government's efforts at this time? No doubt government is making efforts. Yeah, we, we are just trying to identify those things that might make a mess of those efforts. Um, people have invested a lot of hope and trust in this government. And when the government came out to say, look, we all see it. Oil has failed us as we expected that it would. Uh, so right now you have a lot of people looking the way of agriculture. What we are concerned about is that what will be the story a few years down the line? Will they regret like people who did this in the past? Will they regret? Or is it, have we really learned our lessons that agriculture is the way and we are ready, you know, to take our right of place in, in you know, in, in the world in terms of agricultural produce? So in terms of creating an enabling environment, government needs to look at it. A lot of encouragement for young people. Okay. Uh, state Can government. Just, just hold it there in terms of encouragement for young people. Mm -hmm. When we come back... We'll look at that, but then we'll look at the inputs, mm -hmm. GMO versus hybrid seeds, based on go away. Mm -hmm.